So what exactly is a hab check and do we really need one? I can't believe we've had this motorhome for almost a year now. So to celebrate her birthday, we're bringing her back to our friends at Broad Lane and we're gonna give her a full habitation check. Right, if you've been following the channel for more than a year, then you'll remember Aid who handed over our, our vehicle to us last year. Thank you for seeing us again, Adrian. No problem, welcome back to Broad Lane. Thank you. So the first question I have is, what's a hab check? A habitation check is a testing of equipment in motorhomes or camper vans. Uh, and basically we will be on the serving side, uh, the engineers test the gas, the water, the electrics, both 12 volt and mains. Uh, there'll be a damp meter check done on vehicles where it's applicable because some of the new vehicles on the marketplace are made of fiberglass yeah. and that's not uh, relevant uh, on the damp test. Uh, and general condition of the vehicle, so externally and internally. Why do we need one? It's a requirement more on for if it's a new vehicle uh, the manufacturers have warranty periods, uh, they can be up to a 10 year period and it's important that a habitation check and an engine service check is done on a regular basis. Habitation every 12 months, an engine check depending on the manufacturer of the vehicle, uh, of, that, of the chassis, uh, that could be up to two years annually, okay. uh, but up to 30,000 or a two year period, but it is recommended that an all change is done after the first year, within the first year. So basically, it's for the safety of the vehicle and also to keep your warranty valid. Correct. This is the tick list. Let's go out and do it. So there are two main options when you need to get your habitation check done. We've come back to Broad Lane and Aid because you are? We are an approved workshop scheme centre. Yep, the other option is you could get a mobile caravan engineer out to you. Both are approved by the NCC. The AWS hab check usually covers eight different parts to the van. The first one we're going to look at is the underbody. What does that mean? So the underbody covers basically the external part of the chassis. Yep. So you may have additional legs being fitted to the rear of the vehicle and we just need to make sure that they operate correctly and lubricated. Uh, it would also include the uh, look, mechanical operation of a step if you've got a mechanical step underneath the body. and. Uh, the onboard tanks, if you've got a fresh and wastewater tank to make sure they're secure and make sure the pipes are still attached. So the next we've checked the 12 volt battery system, which is fantastic in Steve's uh, unit here. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eco Tree Lithium, check all these for us. Also part of the system on the electrics, we're checking the PSU, the power supply unit. We've got the main supply down here where the charge is also built into. So part of the charging system will be checked and also the 12 volt side, which is the far side here with bank of fuses uh, are also part of the system that's checked on the electrics. So testing the refrigerator, we're going to test it on 230 volt mains, 12 volts and also on the gas side of the system. So we test all the mains sockets on the vehicles, simple mains tester into the socket and making sure that we've got the correct uh, lights illuminated. So on the main side, we'll be testing the microwave for its operation. Uh, we just put a small amount of water in there in the cup and then just turn this appliance on. Uh, and then also on the hob, similar operation here. We've obviously got electric hob ring there and that's that valve there for testing purposes. So on this vehicle, uh, they've had a Truma, a Venter, air conditioning unit fitted, this is an aftermarket fit and that will also be tested as part of the mains. So this is an optional extra that Steve's had fitted, um, it's the EcoTree system uh, and this is showing all the charge voltage coming in both from mains and also off solar panel energy. And next we'll check all the interior lighting on the vehicle, uh, both inside and also on the outside because the awning lights are also part of the same system. So we're testing the gas systems, so from the cylinders through the hose tails, through the crash sensors, through to the bulkhead uh, manifold. Uh, the security of the cylinders when in transit, going through these straps here to retain them in position. We're checking the Audi boiler on this particular motorhome. It works both on gas and electric. Uh, so we will be testing both appliances. Both are off at the moment, but there is also the backup system here, which is also the other way of uh, operating this system. The next area to be tested is the water system. How do you do that? Well, first off, we have to uh, make sure we fill the onboard tanks, mm -hmm. if it's got a fresh water tank. So it's purge that system, then prime it through the system. Obviously, you turn the control panel on to make sure the 12 volt pump is live. Get running water through on the cold side. Once we've got a nice flow of water on the cold, we'll then bring it through the boiler, make sure that system's all full. And then we'll 
heat that system up so that we know we have got the temperature within that uh, within the tap system. From there, we'll also then do the bathroom taps and the shower. And uh, depending on if it's my time, they also take the flush water, normally off the fresh water tanks, but it depends on which system you've got. Other vehicles may have an independent fresh water tank. Next on my list is the bodywork. So we start with the outdoors. What does that entail? Externally, we're looking at the the items of the seals, so external moulding seals, locker seals on the doors themselves to make sure these seals are all intact and haven't got any uh, perishing taking place on those. Mm. We'll also be looking at the windows to make sure they are intact and that they are, are still retained in on the mouldings. Entrance door, making sure that the seal is good to the body line and also that the rubber seals are also intact and aren't perished in any way. We'll also do the exterior roof to make sure that's all good and sound. So we're checking the windows, we'll check the lever latches, the window stays themselves to make sure that the window will lock out at a certain position. And while we've got the window open, we'll then use silicon sprays on the rubber to make sure there's good elasticity retained in that rubber. Fly screens and blinds are also tested and checked to make sure they perform correctly. So floor and furniture, we'll do a physical walk test down the floor of the vehicle to make sure that there's no sponginess on the vehicle and to make sure all these lockers are sound, square and all the hinge points and latches operate correctly. A couple of weeks ago when we were up at Swift we saw how the vehicles are put together and the fact that the walls are made from the fibreglass. There's two layers which means there's no wooden inserts, it's, it's plastic which means there's no damp. So how would you do a damp test on a vehicle like this? Well, this is a damp meter. Hmm. Uh, there's two ways that we can register damp uh, on vehicles. This is a non-evasive, so it just picks up as you're going over the wall. And then if we do detect uh, something on the non-evasive, we'll then use the probes to get a better reading. Hmm. Uh, on your vehicle, uh, on this one, uh, we can only do the floor, floor readings because the fiberglass we can't penetrate with this, uh, with this meter. In all vehicles, they come with fixed ventilations. Now this will be things like roof vents, where they have on the outside areas a fixed ventilation. We also get them at high level, we get them at floor level. Now the floor level is more for gas drop holes, so they'll be underneath things like your oven, where a gas hole will be underneath to allow gas to escape should there be a gas leak. Uh, it is really important that these vent ventilation points are kept free uh, so they have got the airflow. The last element we're going to look at is fire and safety. Where do you start with that? Well, we'll start at these two appliances straight away. So we have got a carbon monoxide detector and also a smoke detector. Um, you often hear these go off on sites all the time, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, they have test buttons. In the smoke detector, we change the battery. In the carbon monoxide detector, it's a, more or less a throwaway item. You can't replace the battery. Right. So it's a five-year product that's then replaced. So we have a unique fire extinguisher. If there was an extinguisher, a normal style one in, in the vehicle, what would you do for that? Well, it's not normally a, a, a standard item in a motorhome. It's an aftermarket fit. We would always check to make sure it's still in date because they are date stamped. Uh, and that's all that we can test. So we've been here about three hours and the habitation check is done. Has Have we passed? Oh, definitely. We're flying <laughs> colours, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, we do have a, a tick sheet that is always filled in and there's detailed information about all the recordings of the CO2s and charge, charge voltage uh -huh. on your batteries and things like that. So thank you very much, Lindsay. Thank you. And we'll take this away with us. I love the new service reception here. It's really bright and fresh and nice. They've reduced the size of the accessory shop, but it's perfect for all your first time purchases, especially if you're new to motorhoming. And because they're such great mates of ours, they've given us a 10% discount. So if you go into the shop, have a look what you can get a discount on and use the code ROMIN10 and happy shopping. <laughs>